Parkside. It's a blackout here at Minmin County High School tonight, and I believe the fan base, Amy, got the memo here tonight. Oh, definitely. We're filling up pretty good here. Looks like we've got about four minutes left before tip-off, but the stands are definitely getting full. The student section is ready to go. Unfortunately, the Wolverines, though, come in wearing a all-black uniform, but it's nothing for this McMinn County team. They'll be in their home white uniforms as they come in as the region champs out of the Region 3 4A classification where they defeated Cleveland on this same floor back on Thursday night by a final score of 74 to 55. The Cherokees were paced by Trent Peak in that matchup. He had 19 points to join um, uh, Caden Hester with 16. Hayden Smith had 15 along with over 10 rebounds in that game. And Reese Frazier added 10 points as well. You look at their averages coming into this postseason. The Cherokees have five in double figures currently. Leading the way is Caden Hester, the senior. He's averaging 14.5 through five postseason games currently. It was 14 and a half in the two district tournament ball games they've had against Walker Valley and Cleveland. Then he's followed by 12.4 from Hayden Smith and 12.2 for Tucker Monroe. And then both Reese Frazier and Trent Peak even at 11.2 points per game over the last five games here in the tournament. And, Amy, it's the postseason. That's when you want to be hot, playing your best basketball. The Cherokees come in winning their last ten ball games they faced their opponents and, and handled it fairly well here in the last ten games. Definitely. I mean, you've got to think we're playing our best basketball right now. I mean, these last few games have been fun to watch. You know, we've got several players that are contributing. So, you know, even if we have somebody that maybe their shot's not falling that night, we have other people that are picking it up and making shots. And then our defense. You know, I started thinking, you know, what is it about this team that, that's gotten us here? And I, I have to go back to our defense. It, it's, a, it's a very nagging defense, let's call it that, I guess. A very uh, quick, athletic defense. They like to press you full court. And I don't know that Laverne is prepared for that. Laverne focuses a lot on their defensive efforts under Coach Tony Rutland, but they also like to slow it down. They don't like to have a fast-paced tempo, and that's the exact opposite of what this Cherokees team loves to do. They love to get in your face full court pressure, and they will definitely try to put Laverne out of their comfort zone coming into this matchup. Cherokees in the last five uh, postseason games they're outscoring their opponents by 22.8 points per game, only a rabbit averaging or allowing 54 points over those five games. Whereas the Wolverines come in, they are 18 and 14 overall. They are averaging only 52 points in their last five games in the postseason, as well as giving only allowing 43.4, which is a nine-point difference. So and when you look at those numbers, it favors the Cherokees and McMinn County, but you also have to note that this Wolverines team has won seven of their last ten ball games, so they're playing hot at the right time of year, even though they lost a heartbreaker against Blackman in their region final on uh, Thursday night. That one was a 44-43 to overtime win for Blackman. That's where the Cleveland Blue Raiders are this evening. They were over in Murphy Grove, where we went with the Lady Cherokees last year for a sub-state game. Sectional game, sub-state, depends on what era you were around the high school basketball game, but it is dubbed the sectional games now, and so that's where McMinn County finds themselves for the first time on the boys' side since 2011, where they beat Lawrence County on this floor and punched their ticket to the glass house in Murfreesboro. Somebody asked me, if you've never seen Murphy Center over in Murfreesboro, well, it's a glass house. It's Florida, Florida ceiling windows, at least on the perimeter side. And that is the nickname given to the Murphy Center by most everyone trying to make it there uh, in the postseason. Coach Randy Casey in his second year has his ball club 25-8 and eight overall. Tony Rutland, who a little note of him, he played with Tim Duncan over at Wake Forest. He's got oh. his Wolverines 18-14. and 14. We won't tell him I'm a Duke fan at the moment. But Me too. We'll, we'll talk Me too, about Jerry. that after the game. But <laughs> it is set to be an outstanding game here. Packed house at McMinn County High School as we get set – uh, for the start of this game. Right now, we're going to go ahead. We're going to take a two-minute break here from the high school. Back in two minutes. Count on Star Regional Medical Center to care for your... Let us be thankful no matter what happens tonight. Let us bring honor to your name and everything.
65 and older who may have weaker immune systems. With the twindemic of both COVID-19 and flu expected this season, it's also a good time to sign up for the new bivalent Moderna booster. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens. Health markets taking the time to listen and to care. WJSQ FM 101.7, Athens. Back here from McMinn County High School. Let's look at their starting lineups for this evening's sectional game here. The Laverne Wolverines will start zero. Javon Drake, a 6'1 senior forward. Number one, Landon Bryant, a 6'3 sophomore guard. He had averaging 15 here in the postseason at 22 against Blackman. Number three, Brennan Hagewood, a 6'2 senior guard. Number 12, Zai Lenore, a junior guard, averaging 10 in the postseason. And number 30, Cameron Samuels, a sophomore. On the other side, for Randy Casey, as you can hear the crowd going wild as they do the player introductions for the Cherokees. It's double zero, Hayden Smith, averaging 12.4 in the postseason, 6'4", senior post. Number one, Tucker Monroe, he's a 6'4", senior guard, averaging 12.2 points here in the postseason. Number two, Davion Evans, a 5'8", senior guard, four-time all-district regular season player as well. Number 10, Reese Frazier, the 5'10", sophomore guard, averages 11.2 here in the five game of the postseason. And 15, Caden Hester, a 6'2", senior guard, averaging 14.4. And 14 and a half was in the district tourney for the Cherokees. This crowd is on its feet. Student section packed out here. And literally, I don't know the last time that we've had everybody on their feet for the player introduction, but... Oh, definitely a good crowd. And in the student section, they're painted up, and it says one more. So it's Randy Casey's term that he likes to use with his players is 32 minutes, and that's what they have. They've got to win the next 32 minutes to be able to punch their ticket to Murfreesboro starting next weekend or next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, would be the date set up for that. But first, they got to take care of the Wolverines here at home, McMinn County home white uniforms, gold numerals trimmed in black. The Wolverines wearing all black, blue numerals trimmed in white. And the tip is to the Cherokees. Evans with the control of it. Cherokees come in as a season averaging 71 points a game. Evans, quick dish from the baseline out to Hester. He's going to miss the three big time, and it's going to go out of bounds on the Cherokees. And so they will open full court pressure against this Laverne high school team from Rutherford County. They work it up the far side of the floor. Evans trying to catch up to him. They lose the ball. Evans comes away with a steal here for the Cherokees. Fast break, Hester gets to the low block. He'll kick it right side to Monroe. Pass fake, three-pointer for him, no good. Battling for the rebound. It's gonna be taken off here by Hagewood. He brings it left side of the floor. It's poked away momentarily by Drake, or from Drake. Hagewood has it back out front, drops it out to Lenore. Lenore sends it over to the right side. They bring it back up top to Samuels. Here's Bryant with the ball. They'll bring it near side. It's Lenore with it once again. Cherokee is trying to buckle down man-to-man defense. Blocked by Evans in the corner. It was Bryant trying to get a three-pointer off, and Davion Evans, he's given up quite a bit of height there, but he made it and blocked that, the shot. That just shows you how high he can jump. Blocked a 6-3 guard shot from the corner. Inbounds coming from Lenore. Gets it into Hagewood. Smith guarding him. Hagewood sends it out to Lenore. Evans, a couple of claps of the hands. He's ready to lock down defensively. A minute played. Hester gets his hand in the passing lane. Bounces it up to Evans. Evans across the lane to Frazier. And there's the first bucket of the ball game. Reese Frazier off the assist by Davion Evans. Set up by the steal by Caden Hester. Here comes a drive by Bryant, and they quickly answer right back and knock this game up two apiece. Main County not going to see full court pressure from this Wolverines team. No. They like to focus on the defensive effort, but it's a half court set up. Looks like man-to-man by the Wolverines. Fraser takes a three from the top. A lot of contact on it, no call. They'll reset defensively here. Lenore, quick pass over to Bryant. Bryant goes baseline, ball is tipped away. Hagewood comes away with it, missed a shot, gets his own rebound, and they're going to get a jump ball. jump ball. So it will stay with the Wolverines here on their end of the floor. Lenore set to inbound it once again. Trying to get it in. He'll lob it to the backcourt. Hester tried to get a hand on it. Hagewood able to get it. Now 
Evans is going to pick up a quick foul here, trying to beat his man to the ball off the pass, but it didn't work out, and that's our first foul of the ball game with just a little over two minutes played. They're going to inbound it right in front of us here on press row. Main County still showing man-to-man defense. Inbound to the backcourt. It goes to Lenore. They had 15 points in their semifinal region matchup. It's going to be Brian on the far wing. Gets a screen there from Drake. Kicks it out to Samuels. They move it around the horn to Hagewood. Wood dribbles. Stolen by Smith. Smith on the fast break. He double and he dri- double dribbled. He was wanting to pass it up to Frazier, and he knew it. That's okay. I can take that. What effort by him to get the steal there. Great job. It's going to be inbounded to Lenore. They'll bring it up the near side. Five and a half to go. First quarter action. They skip it back far side over to Lenore. He's got Evans guarding him. Lenore with the left-handed dribble now to his right. Trying to take Evans to the right. Gets all the way in. Blocked by Hester, and they're going to call a foul. Let's hope that's not on Davion. It it is going to be the second on Davion Evans. Looked like a player just slipped, and really a new uh, uh, officiating crew that we've not seen all year. And so Trent Peake, the region MVP, coming to the scorer's table. And the student section on that far side, making it hard for the Wolverines. But they do make the first one here is Lenore. And they have their first lead of the ball game, 3-2. to two. 5.22 to play. Lenore takes a little practice shot. No dribbles, really. And this one does rattle in for him. It's a two-point lead for the Wolverines. McMinn County gets trapped. Frazier trying to get away from it. Gets it over to Peak, who's in for Evans. Peak skip pass back out to Frazier. McMinn County going to have to settle down here offensively. Frazier takes it all the way in. Goes up strong. Gets the foul. And he'll get two free throws coming back the other end. Good drive by Frazier. Looked like the burn was trying to do a little full court there after that free throw. Maybe that's part of it. They had really not had too many opportunities to set up in a full court press against this Cherokee quick tempo team. But it's going to be Reese Frazier at the line. Currently the only Cherokee in the scoring column, and he adds to his total there. Makes it four to three. Laverne in front. 507 to play. Packed house once again. Last several games in the postseason have been packed from McMinn County High School as Frazier does get the roll here on the home bounce, nodded back up at, for the second time. Little snowbird opportunity. Bryant misses the lay in. Smith gets the rebound on the backside over to Frazier. Frazier behind his back at midcourt. Gets bumped here again by Drake. No call. Hester puts it on the ground. Low dribble through two defenders, able to come back out front with it. Here's Peak. Drive on the right side, up and under. He'll get two shots. Great take by Trent Peak right there. And this one's going to be the second on Drake. So both teams with two players with two fouls on them so far. <laughs> Trent Peak at the line. First one is good for Peak. That's going to bring 23, Dante White, the 6'6 junior forward, really their tallest player, onto the floor as he will sub in for Drake. And Cherokees back in front by two here. Inbounds, full court pressure by the Cherokees. Peak trying to take it away from Lenore. Lenore able to get it across to Samuel. Samuels goes right side. Off the glass, no good. Rebounded, collected by Smith once again. Smith in transition. Feeds it over to Peak. He goes baseline, and Peak's got a lay-in and a foul. Trent Peak going back to the charity strike. And that's what we saw from him, you know, in that uh, region tournament, the championship game, just taking it to the goal. Great job. Increase their lead to four and a three-point play opportunity coming for the junior guard. And he converts it five points as the lead for McMinn County here in this sectional game. They get a turnover here in the backcourt. The crowd is going to stay amped up if they keep playing like this. They had a 100 to 
104-42 win against Shelbyville to start the region first round game. And they have not looked back, playing outstanding basketball here late. Here's Monroe, gets it back out front to Frazier. Coach Randy Casey calling up the signals, assisted by Drew Hahn and Jay Johnson. Frazier spins in the lane, had to throw it up quickly. Yeah. Had comes to change from behind. his shot. And looked like he had poked that one off of the hands of Lenore, but missed it. Luckily, doesn't get the foul call either. Pagewood setting it in motion. Gets it over to Bryant. Bryant trying to push off. And Frazier now skip past to the far side. Lenore has it. Gets inside the arc. Floater off the glass is good for him. And it's going to be an over and back against McMinn County. Said he crossed the inbounds line too quickly. And so the Cherokees turn it over on the offensive and for the Wolverines here. Three-point game. 3.55 to play in the first quarter. Inbounds comes quickly to Samuels. Good defense by Tucker Monroe battling there. Hester cleans up the glass. Hester pushing the pace behind his back dribble. Back to Monroe. Little head fake. Pull up 15-footer for Tucker Monroe is good. That's a money shot for Tucker Monroe. Great shot. That elbow. There's nothing you can do with that. I love it. Now a pass across the court. They get it up to Samuel. Samuel's into the lane. Shovel pass intercepted by, that's got to be a walk, but it's going to be a turnover anyway as they throw it to Trent Peak. White got stuck on the baseline. Here's Hester. Little step back. Short on it. Smith tips it up. Able to stay with it. Goes up. Doesn't get the foul there. Looked like he could get it. But nonetheless, not bailing him out there. Here comes an opportunity for the Wolverines of Laverne. Lenore has it right wing. Bounces it down low to White. White just bodies up Hester inside. He gets his first points. And it's a three-point game once again. Here's a baseline drop by Peak. Reverse layup too short. The Cherokees are going to have to drop back quickly defensively. Big bounce pass feed into White. And he's going to draw the foul here against Frazier. Not a bad foul against Reese Frazier No, it's there. not. That's, is that his first? Yep. His first team third. And so here it will be Dante White, the junior forward. He averaged 11 points in the district tournament. District 8 is their classification. He misses the first one here. And he's a big body. I mean, you know, he, he's going to be tough to contain. That he is. It's going to be a sub coming in. It's going to be number 10, Stephen Sherman, the six-foot sophomore guard. will check in for the Wolverines. They're almost like Cleveland. They don't play a lot of different bodies. McMinn County, though, on the other hand, has a deeper bench that they like to use. 2.40 to go, first quarter action. Frazier, as the ball gets a double high screen, goes right side, drops it back to Monroe off another screen. Monroe gets stuck, skip pass. It comes out to Frazier. Smith was wide open underneath. It would have been a quick pass, but they'll back it up. Frazier gets a screen on the right from Smith. Smith rolls on it. Drops it to Peak. Peak back to Frazier. Frazier, a little drive. Gets stuck inside. Hagewood just takes it off of his hands. Fast break, three on one. An oop for White, and he'll slam that one home. It's down to a one point game. Cherokees have it quickly on their offensive end. And the Cherokees are going to go to the line. You can tell that they're late. You know, the Since 1903. And so Trent Peak will go to the stripe. I believe we lost you there on the radio, but glad to have you back here. Signal cut out, but Trent Peak at the line for the Cherokees. He'll make the first one here. Puts it back to a two-point advantage for McMinn County with 154 to play. Evans back in. Frazier out of the ball game. And it's going to bring Samuels back into the ball game here for the Wolverines. 23 White checking out. Peak converts it both at the line, continuing that trend he had in the region championship. He's at seven already. Full court pressure. Big skip pass. Smith comes flying in to deflect it out of bounds. 
Good pressure by the Cherokees there. And just like we were talking about, you know, our defense is what is what we've got to really be sure we're getting after them, you know. It's going to be inbounded on the side, trying to get into the backcourt. They do to Lenore. Lenore head up. Evans guarding him with two fouls. Far side it goes to Sherman. Sherman around the top of the key. They come left side to Bryant. Bryant trying to circle the top of the key. He'll pass it to his right over to Brennan Hagewood. Lenore looks back at Coach Rutland. Minute 25 to go, first quarter. They go to the left. Lenore back to the free throw line. Pulls up just inside the line. Too strong off to the left. Hester with the board there for McMinn County. Peak up in transition. And they're going to call a travel in the crowd. Erupts. Peak had it without having to take a dribble. And there's going to be a timeout on the floor. The Cherokees leading the Wolverines 13-10. We'll be back in 30 seconds. At Simmons Bank Community Matters, since 1903, we've been dedicated to serving our communities with empowered local leadership. I'm Shane Whaley, Regional President of our East Tennessee Market. While some things have changed in recent years, one thing that's stronger than ever is our local team's commitment to serving our community. We offer exceptional service and unmatched expertise to provide solutions to your said that was not a, walk. a reliable partner for you because, after all, we're always better together. Simmons Bank, member FDIC. Back here at McMinn County High School, Jared Wright, Amy McPhail. And that entire side for McMinn County fans where Trent Peak was when he caught that full court pass from Hester was on their feet erupting at that call, but... It's a turnover by the Cherokees. Here comes the Wolverines with a minute 10. Lenore double dribbles it off his hip. Now Samuels gets the hook shot on the left side as Hayden Smith's going to come down for his first foul. Team fourth. And that's going to send Samuels to the line after it was an and one opportunity, a chance for the Wolverines to tie it up here for the first time since they tied it up at two all with or five, four all with 5.07 to play. He misses it. Evans collects the board. He'll push the pace. Gets inside the arc, bounces it out into the corner. Monroe's three off the back iron, rebounded by Bryant. Cherokee still pressing full court, 54 seconds to go. Lenore, skip pass out into the corner to Sherman. Now they'll reset looking. We'll see if they try to attack or hold it for the last shot of the first quarter. It's down to a 40 second on the game clock. Lenore gets to the right, circles it back out on the perimeter. Bryant tells him to slow it down and back it out. Bryant was standing in the far corner. All four Wolverines at the high post trying to set a screen for Lenore. Pop out on the screen is Bryant, guarded by Hester. Gets around the backside screen, gets a layup on the left side. Lincoln County did not pick up the help defense there, and the Wolverines go back in front by one. Here's Hester, though, for three. It rattles off. Ten seconds to go. Here in the first quarter, the Wolverines can extend their lead, potentially to their largest of the ball game. Bryant takes a deep three off the back iron. It's going to be no good. And so at the end of the first quarter, it's a close one. Cherokee's led by as many as five, but currently trail 14 to 13 against Laverne. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Did you know that All Things Exterior is your one-stop shop for energy-efficient metal roofing, vinyl siding, windows, doors, decking, gutters, and more? Basically, if it involves the exterior of your home, we can help. Hi, I'm Buffy Jones. For nearly 20 years, Michael and I have been honored to help with your construction and home improvement projects. Whether you need one sheet of metal or a hundred, we appreciate your business. We offer quick turnaround, competitive pricing, and professional installation. Come see us at 723 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All things exterior, your one-stop shop. Now's the best time to take precautions against the flu. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, your independently owned health Park pharmacy, has both the standard flu vaccine and the new high-dose flu vaccine recommended for patients age 65 and older who may have weaker immune system. With a twin demic of both COVID-19 and flu expected this season, it's also a good sign to sign up for the new bivalent Moderna booster. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, over 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens, Health Mart, taking the time to listen. And to care. Back here at McMinn County High School, Cherokees trailing at 14 to 13. 
Each team has had the lead twice here in the first quarter action. Now McMahon kind of gets it inside, and Hayden Smith's going to put them back in front as they pick up an and one opportunity once again here. And this one's going to be on number three. Pagewood picks up his first, team fifth. Smith put the Cherokees just back in front by one here. 12 seconds into this second quarter action. We've got Reese Frazier checking back in for Davion Evans. And Smith converts a three-point play. His first three points of the ball game. Two-point lead from McMinn County. Monroe closing out in the corner here against Sherman. They'll work it back out front. Now a drive by Hagewood, blocked on the way up by Smith, but Wolverines get the rebound. They skip it back out front. Ball tipped away momentarily. Bryant recovers it, and he'll knock down about a 15-footer. So McMinn County had their hands on it, couldn't get it, and ties it up with 7.20 to go. And off to peak out front between the circles. He'll go left side to Monroe. A little three-man weave action coming. Here's Frazier around the screen from Smith. Frazier gets all the way to the left side, kicks it out though to Hester. His three is nothing but not a Caden Hester's first basket of the ball game, and it's a big one. Put him up by three with a minute played in the second quarter. It's gonna be Lenore skipping it over on the far side to Bryant. Hagewood, near corner, three-pointer, in and out it goes. There for Lenore, Monroe cleans up the defensive board. Sends it into the corner to Hester. Hester drives inside, goes up strong, gets the bucket. And nope, they're gonna wave it off. They're gonna say it's a charge. Caden Hester gonna wipe points off the board with the charge and both teams with five fouls apiece. White coming back in for the Wolverines. He'll replace Sherman. And Cherokee's trying to punch their ticket to Murfreesboro for the first time in 12 years. It's 2011. Keith Elliott was the coach. He's in the crowd on the far side. Can see him over there in his black T-shirt. Mm. Reese Frazier looks like he got busted in the eye or cheek, so going to have to get him cleaned up. Evans back into the ball game for him. Full court pressure by McMinn County. 2-2-1 press. Evans and Hester trying to trap Lenore in the backcourt. They get it over to Hagewood. Hagewood, a little short baseline jumper, kisses it off the glass. His first field goal of the ball game, and it's 19 to 18. Cherokee still in front, though. Evans quickly, baseline feed over to Hester. What a pass. That was a great pass. I don't know how he got it through there. Peyton Hester had to put his head on a swivel because it was coming at him quickly. McMinn County forces a bad pass here, and they will try to extend their lead here up by three. Five is their largest lead. They could tie that one. They're the really trying time. to push the ball up the floor when White's in the game. He's got two fouls on him, so also a guy you kind of want to attack. Here's Monroe, quick pass into Hester. Hester gets blocked by White, throws it off of White, ball's loose, Lenore picks it up in the front court. Poked away by Peak from behind, him and Monroe collab on the steal. Cherokees get it midcourt, Hester with it. Three on two break, bounce pass, feed to Peak, and another Unforced turnover as Peak trying to get it to Smith and just. It was a good idea. Yep. It was just, he just couldn't get a hold of the pass. Got caught on the baseline with it. Lenore get the inbound. Working to the middle of the floor. Trying to get it free into Samuels at the top of the key. Samuels drops it into White. White goes up strong. Samuels with the putback though. He's got his second field goal. And it's. Down to a one-point game once again. 21 to 20. 5.15 to go. Evans works it to the right side off the dribble. Gets it to Peak and Monroe out front now. Back to Evans it comes. And it looks like they've just kind of started switching off on the guard play. Lenore out top on Evans. Monroe top of the key. Trying to get a screen from Smith. Hester in the far corner with it. They'll pass it back around the top of the key. Under five we go. Evans gets tripped up on his way in, but it gets over into the corner to peak. He missed it. Hester's put back no good. And McMinn County misses a couple opportunities. Hester got tripped up there. Now on the fast break, Bryant gets the lay-in on the other side, and it's back to a one-point lead for the Wolverines. Evans here inside. They'll kick it back out front. 
A drive here by Hester got fouled hard, and they call that one. Had him on the arm, even though he had all of the ball. And yeah. White's going to pick up the third. Yeah, I think he did get him on the arm a little bit. Aiden Hester will go to the strike. And that's a good break for us because when he's in there, I mean, it's, it's tough to get his it's, shots up. Especially for a team like the Cherokees that like to attack the rim. And they're looking for a towel for the floor. Um, they're asking them, both benches. Neither one of them providing a towel as of the moment. We got one towel. No towel boys anywhere. It's big gym. We got one <laughs> towel, Jared. They're just trying to clean it up with their feet now. It's going to allow Javon Drake to check back in. He'll replace White, but Drake's another big guy with two fouls. So definitely doesn't have the height that White does have, Dante White, but he was their starting forward inside. So here's Hester going to try to attempt the first free throw. And it's money there. Ties it up at 22 all. Hester with a sixth point, trying to make it seven here. And he does just that. 23 to 22, Cherokees back in front. Middle of the floor, it's Samuels with it. Goes baseline, loses the handle, and he travels. Brian upset with his teammate that he didn't throw the ball out there to him. Frazier back in, he's taped up, ready to go. He'll replace uh, Trent Peak of or Hester comes out. Peak still in the ball game in the near corner. Evans across midcourt, gets double teamed, breaks away from it. Nice bounce pass, thought, but it's intercepted there by Drake. Here's Lenore on the break, trying to get away from Evans. Big battle there. Evans blocked it momentarily on the pass. Cherokee's up 23-22. 3.50 to go in the second quarter. Here's Bryant off a back screen, catches it, working against Frazier. Frazier right on his hip, follows him in, layup no good. Monroe trying to pull the rebound. It's going to be knocked out of bounds by Samuel. And that one really should have been the foul, not the rebound call to go McMinn County's way. Now, their refs are letting this play. Yep. I mean, they've called fouls, but it's still pretty physical. And it there. might be the advantage that, the, at least for our record, they have not seen either of these teams that we know of at least on the McMinn County side. Here's Monroe uh, setting a screen. He'll get the handoff from Evans, deep three, and he's going to airball it. Tucker Monroe, unorthodox there for him. And there's going to be a charge against Hagewood. Good job by Reese Frazier to sell that one. Hagewood's going to pick up his second, team seventh. No player control foul lead. They don't lead to the one and one, but the Cherokees are in the bonus for the next 317. And that's going to be the ninth turnover by Laverne. So Laverne, we have six. Laverne's a team trying to punch their first ticket to Murfreesboro. McMinn County will be their ninth trip all time to the state tournament. Here comes Frazier. Cuts inside, kicks over. Monroe, corner three. That one's in. For there we go. Just got to start found, saying I'm falling. Found the spot. Four-point lead for the Cherokees. Largest it's been in quite some time. Since about 3.40 in the first quarter. Hester back to the table to check in. Lenore sends it over to Hagewood. Hagewood puts it on the floor to his left. Now gets it out to Drake. It's poked away momentarily. Monroe able to get the steal up to Frazier. Frazier takes the lay-in. And of note, that's the same exact way. I was to say, it's the same thing Trent Peake did, Trent except Peake they did. called a walk. Maybe the other two refs told Told her, listen, that yep. wasn't really a walk. Here's Lenore in transition. Pass inside on the baseline is good to Drake. Drake shoves it out of bounds. Should have been a delay of game, but they don't call it. Four-point lead for the Cherokees, and a take here by Smith is going to lead to two shots for the senior forward. This one's going to be the third on Drake. So you wonder how that those foul problems are going to play into the game You know, as we get into the fourth quarter. And especially for a team that only plays about six, maybe seven people. Smith at the table, or at the line, sorry. He could be at the table. Can. We can call it the table. <laughs> They're going to take Reese Frazier out real quick, trying to clean up that blood on his neck. And so Cherokee's back up by five. They've led by as many as six. 
Hester does come in for Frazier. Smith's still at the line. He was actually coming out for Hester in a minute, but they have to readjust here, and they're going to try to get that off of his. It's either his undershirt or his neck is what they signaled. It was on his undershirt. Here's Smith. Second free throw was good. So a lot going on here in this sub-state game. Back in front by six are the Cherokees. Smith with five points so far. Here's Lenora, big crossover, top of the key, gets to the right side of the glass, missed it. Smith pulls down his fifth board. Smith in transition, kicks it. Hester for three, off the back iron. Monroe chases down the long rebound, tips it over to Hester. Cherokees will have a minute 51. Now a backdoor, no look feed to Hayden Smith from Caden Hester. Outstanding senior to senior connection on that one. Eight point lead for the Cherokees, their largest. Men County still man-to-man defensively. Baseline drive by Sherman. Uh. <laughs> Looks like he traveled, but Tucker Monroe's going to get called for the foul on yep. this one, his first. They're calling him for the block there. I'm just surprised we're calling that foul <laughs> compared to all the contact that we've seen here tonight. So Evans will come out. Frazier back in. It should be. Oh, I guess it's not one and one. Okay. It's not for them. They've only got six on the okay. Men County. So. Quick inbound, three-pointer, no good. Smith's got his sixth board. He comes back down the floor quickly, drops it back to Monroe, going for another three. Off the back iron, Hester, big offensive board. Minute 20 to play here in the second quarter. Drops it out to Frazier. They're going to maybe run a little clock here. Or the Cherokees. Hester, or sorry, Frazier with it near the midcourt strike. Clock now. At 60 seconds to go in the half. Frazier guarded by Hagewood, trying to get away from the five-second call. Pete now has it in control. Hagewood out there on him, just switching off on the guards is what they're doing. The post defender staying with their people underneath. 45 seconds to go, up by eight. Largest lead for the Cherokees, 32-24. Winner advances to Murfreesboro. Loser season is over. Cherokees, Frazier with it out front, 30 seconds to go. Almost looks like a box in one now that the Wolverines have dropped in two. Game clock down now to 20 seconds. Frazier a glance up at the clock. With the ball in his left hand, taking a couple of dribbles, he'll switch to the right. Now they start to move offensively. Screen from Smith. Frazier pops the three, it's in and out. Had a good look. Hester battling Lenore for the rebound. Lenore comes away, though, trying to get something off across midcourt. His attempt at the three is no good. And so the Cherokees withstand a couple of big runs by the Wolverines and finally push that lead back up to eight here at the half, 32-24. to That is their largest lead. They led by six a couple of times, five points three different times. But they do finally get it going here late in the second quarter, getting themselves to the charity strike, putting the Wolverines in some foul trouble here late in the first half. So they're going to try to keep that rolling after they come back out of the locker room. So right now, Cherokee's up 32, the Wolverines 24. We'll be back in two minutes. At Capstar Bank, we are listening. We want to earn not just your business, but your confidence and loyalty. Capstar Bank is locally owned and operates with a higher level of personalization and passion for greatness than any bank you've ever encountered. Capstar Bank, with locations in Athens, Etowah, Cleveland, Sweetwater, Madisonville, and East Tennessee. And online at capstarbank.com. Capstar Bank.
district tournament champions, the regional tournament champions, and won the first round state game against Oakland. Coached by Keith Elliott, Jody Gibson, Ronnie McMahon, Jason Keelan, Sean Crenshaw, Brad Landers, John Gurman, Patrick O'Connor, James Dugan, James Ewing, Chris Harmon, Jason Arnold, George Stoffer, Jeremy Dalton, and Jabril Versa. Tonight's live stream broadcast is being sponsored by the 91 yeah. team and then uh, Coach Elliott was an, an assistant at that time so that's the year I graduated from high school not not to tell everybody my age but you know. So see <laughs> you've gotten if you think back to your days and of course your dad Vic Arwood longtime coach here at McMahon but you've seen a lot of success from McMahon County and plenty of chances to go over to Murfreesboro but as a student and, and you played as well what does that mean you coached on a team that was over there in Murfreesboro playing what do the Cherokees have to do to get over there, and what's it like as a, as a player and a coach to get over there? Well, I was thinking about that earlier this week, you know, what, what sports mean to people. You know, it's like if you follow college football, you have your team, and you feel like you're a part of that team even though you never set foot on the field. You know, and that's what it feels like to be a part of this uh, Cherokee basketball program. You know, here you and I are supporting them. You know, we're, I feel like a part of the team. I feel like I'm getting yep. ready to go to Murfreesboro. And, but it really speaks a lot to the culture and thing that we've really tried to develop here. We've got a great student section. You know, that has been built up over the last few years to get kids involved and get them wanting to be out here and to support their classmates. You know, so... It's and, exciting. And it's always – it extends your season, so that's more time, especially for seniors, to get to spend with their teammates and kind of make history here that people are going to talk about for years. I mean, I was texting with our buddy Johnny Kaufman today talking about all the success. He was part of three sub-state uh, games in 48 years that he covered the Cherokee basketball team. And, and it's just you reflect, you get to know those players. So in 10, 20 years, you're going to come back and talk to them. They're going to come back and bring their family to games. So it's – it's always a great atmosphere when you can see those key teams return or, or any former athlete return and get back involved as they have here tonight helping out this Cherokee team trying to get the 2023 team to Murfreesboro. Amy, let's look at some uh, first-half stats from the team there if you want to run those down. Uh, rebounds, we got McMinn with 13, Laverne with 17. Two-point field goals, McMinn was 7 of 14 for 50%. Laverne was 11 of 19 for 55%. Three-point field goals, McMinn was 2 of 12 for 17%. Laverne, 0 of 6. Free throws, McMinn was 12 of 12 for 100%. Laverne, 2 of 5 for 40%. And then turnovers, McMinn with 6 and Laverne with 10. So pretty, pretty evenly matched on the stats. I mean, I'm not seeing a, a whole lot. You know, we only made two threes which is kind of uncharacteristic of us, but 
they're so long. I mean, they've had hands in our faces the whole time. So, you know, all the shots that we have shot have been fairly contested. And Laverne has done an outstanding job of defending. You can tell they've done their prep work on this McMinn County team. McMinn County's done just as much prep work on this Laverne team. But Laverne is at least pushing that perimeter line deeper for the Cherokees. They can knock down the deep shots. But with that hand in your face, it's much harder to hit one three or four feet off the line. And they have done a good job, at least on the guard side, on the top side of this defense, have the Wolverines pressured the shooters of McMinn County and not letting them get into a comfortable rotation. But the Cherokees have also attacked the rim very well. They've put Drake and uh, White into foul trouble with three fouls apiece for the Wolverines. Hagewood has two. He's one of their key leading scorers and players on this ball club. Um, But Cherokees... uh, if they just play their game for the next 16 minutes, it's going to be key That's for them. Right. And i tell you who's really stood out for me for Laverne is White. Yep. You, you know, when he's been in, they've really tried to push the ball up the floor and get it to him quickly under the goal. And then, you know, on the defensive end, when he's down low, he, he's causing our shooters a lot of problems. I mean, he's, so, he's already so tall and then he's so long. He's really causing us to change our shot, and he's blocked several shots since he's been in there. So. That he has. Let's go ahead. We're still at halftime, 32-24. Let's go ahead. We'll take a 30-second break before the start of the third quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Now's the best time to take precautions against the flu. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, your independently owned Health Park Pharmacy, has both a standard flu vaccine and a new high-dose flu vaccine recommended for patients age 65 and older. You may have weaker immune system. With a twin demic for both COVID-19 and flu expected this season, it's also a good time to sign up for the new bivalent Moderna booster. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens, Health Park, taking the time to listen. And to care. Back here at Mimmin County High School looking as they start the third quarter. Leading the way for the Cherokees, it's eight points by Trent Peak, Seven points by Caden Hester. Seven by Hayden Smith. Five for Tucker Monroe and five for Reese Frazier. Leading the way for the Wolverines, it's Landon Bryant with six points for them. And then they have a host at four points apiece. It's Wolverines ball out of the halftime break. They have it into the paint. A little open take there by Samuels. Missed it. Smith pulls down the backside rebound. His seventh of the ball game over to Hester. Hester in the front court. 30 seconds played here in the third. Frazier works it back to Evans. Loses the handle, but quick feet stays with it. Loses it again. Bryant has it. It's a one-on-two fast break. Bryant trying to go up, and it's going to be a blocking foul on Reese Frazier. Cherokees going to give him an and-one opportunity as the Wolverines get the first Field goal here in the second half. Cuts a lead for the Cherokees down to six. White's back into the ball game after Samuels misses that shot inside. And so Bryant is at eight points now to lead all Wolverines. Pauls is at the free throw line. And the and one is good for him. He's got nine, 32-27. Here comes Evans with it across midcourt. Bounces it over to Hayden Smith. Hayden Smith got an open look to the lane. He'll draw the two-shot foul coming his way. This one looks like it's going to be on number one, Landon Bryant. His first, team first of the quarter. I want to give a shout-out Raymond Dills. He's doing quick work with the balls there at halftime. and Saw a picture of him and that 91 team and a young Raymond Dills there on the side with the team as Hayden Smith. Makes the yes, first and one I, here. I should have put him down too as being part of that. But Raymond been around. He told me 46 years he's going to try to make it another three. Smith in and out. This one goes. It rolled all the way around the rim for him, but he's at eight. Cherokee's leading it by six, 33-27. Bryant, 15-footer is no good, but Frazier got his hand on him at the last second after mm-hmm. the shot. Really didn't impact it. And Coach Casey telling Reese, yep, you fouled him. Frazier looking surprised there, but he's got three, so that's the foul trouble for McMinn County. Evans with two. Peak coming back in. Bryant back to the line for two. And he makes the first one. He's into double figures. First player for either team there tonight. Just a minute three gone here in this third quarter action. I believe we saw Ronnie McMahon make the entrance. Didn't make a halftime presentation, but 
Yes, I think we're going to try to announce him after the third quarter. Evans gets the miss off the rebound there by Bryant. Now Hester gets it, throws it out of bounds off of Bryant. Hester had to tiptoe the sideline there. Joe Young, the principal of Mid County, catching that ricochet. Talk about a principal that celebrates just as much as the students. He can jump up and down with the best of them. Smith over to Evans. Now up top, it's Hester and Evans with it. Five-point advantage, 33-28. Evans working against Bryant. Goes to the left side. Has an open look for three. He'll take it off the back iron. Missed opportunity, but it looked good the whole way. Here's Hagewood. Gets it left or near side to Lenore. He'll go middle of the floor. Little quick pass sells through White's hands. White's telling him to shoot it. Telling Lenore he had the open floater in the lane. He, White, I think, with his size, would rather try to rebound that one. Evans brings it up the floor. Near side. Gets a high screen from Smith and Monroe. Drops it back to Monroe. A little double screen. Monroe pops the three in for his eighth point of the ball game. 36-28. Cherokees have tied their largest lead of eight. Quickly, they answer on the other end. Lenore knocks that one in. Evans quickly in transition. Flips it up over his head and gets the foul. Davion Evans creating right there. That one's going to be the third on Hagewood. I, I still don't know how that ball went in. Because <laughs> his body, he was the way he was turned. That's amazing. Flips it up over his head and then makes it and draws the foul. That's Davion Evans' first points of the night and make it three as he converts at the line. Pushes it to a nine-point lead, their largest. 5.50 to play. Third quarter action. Jared Wright, Amy McPhail. TWSWA 4A sectional ball game. Winner advances to Murfreesboro. Bounce pass down low to White. Smith strips him on the way up. Okay. Good hands by Hayden Smith. So it'll be Wolverine ball underneath. Their own goal. Wolverines average around 50 points a game. Cherokee's much quicker. Smith gets a steal, but then turns it right back over. Hagewood picks it up, trying to get it to White, and they turn it over. A missed oop there, and Monroe pulls down the rebound. Going to try to get it up the floor. Long bounce pass to Evans, middle of the court. It's a big break for the Cherokees, but they're going to throw it away. They essentially had a four-on-two break as there was three Wolverines in the backcourt. And Coach Casey's telling him, settle down just a little bit. You know, settle down. So it'll be Wolverine ball, 94 feet to go. 2-2-1 two, two, press. Peak trying to guard Bryant. Big pass up to Hagewood. Long bounce pass to the block, and that one's going to be good for Drake. His fourth point of the night. Down to a seven-point game. 5 5 to go. A couple of turnovers for the Cherokees have plagued their last couple of trips. After the Monroe three-pointer. Evans left wing fakes the screen, goes all the way in. Kick out to Hester in the far corner. Hester gets it to a cutting Monroe, and he travels with it. Got too much inside right there, and Cherokees think got a little confused, miscommunication. It's going to be, well, they didn't get Reese Fraser in. He was at the table, but. Quick pass inside. Drake loses the handle. Evans poke it away. Drake gets it and puts it back in. He's got back-to-back buckets for the Wolverines. It's down to a five-point game. Laverne not going away here. Cherokees need a big bucket here to stop the momentum from Laverne. Monroe out front. Drops it to Peak. Peak trying to get away from Drake. Evans now with it. Around the screen from Smith. Evans into the lane. Up and under, layup is good. Davion Evans creating once again. Unreal how he got the English on that ball to spin it off the rim and in. Now White loses it momentarily, gets it back to Bryant. Peak looked like he fouled him but didn't call. Now Bryant's put back as good after his own rebound. He's got 12 to lead all scores. Five point lead once again for McMinn County. Smith out front, he'll pop the wide open three. Off dead, off the right side of the iron. Missed opportunity there. Here comes Bryant. Sends it right side. Three-pointer up for Sherman. No good. Tucker Monroe. He's going to keep padding the rebounding stats up to at least four. 3.33 to go in the third. And Evans is going to take a deep breath at midcourt corner. 
Ian Monroe out front with it, 41-36. Cherokees have been trying to score in the 70s throughout this postseason. Peak, top of the key, three rattles in and out and off the backboard. Looked good the whole way. Thought it was going to even bounce in off the glass. Bryant in transition, sends it over to Hagewood. Hagewood drives inside, gets it to White, and the foul call is going to be on the floor. Said White was on the ground. and Well, they're going to call that one on Hayden Smith. Oh. It's going to be his second. I thought that was going to be on Peak. I did too, but it's going to be a timeout from Coach Casey with his team leading at 41-36 to and three minutes remain in the third. We'll be back in 60 seconds. At Capstar Bank, we're listening. We want to earn not just your business, but your confidence and loyalty. Capstar Bank is locally owned and operates with a higher level of personalization and passion for greatness than any bank you've ever encountered. Capstar Bank, with locations in Athens, Etowah, Cleveland, Sweetwater, Madisonville, and East Tennessee. And online at capstarbank.com. Capstar Bank, we're listening. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Count on Star Regional Medical Center to help your family stay healthy. It's why we're here, close to home, providing quality care to folks of all ages. So you, your family, and our community can all be at their very best. Star Regional Medical Center, from the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. To find a primary care provider, visit starregional.com and click on the Find a Doctor tab. WJSQ, WLAR, Athens, Tennessee, Jared Wright, Amy McPhail in this 4A sectional game. Essentially the final 16 in 4A playing tonight. Boys tournament over in Murfreesboro doesn't start until next Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on what the draw is. Girls start tomorrow. Chargerettes punching their ticket into that. Congratulate them on Cross County there. Todd I think they Loveday play Thursday at 1130. Yep. Todd Loveday. Josh Boggess making that trip over there to cover their action. Here's Lenore off a dribble at the top of the key. Throws one up, and it's in for Lenore. Cherokee lead down to three. It's been a little bit of a momentum swing for the Wolverines here as they keep pressuring the Cherokees out of the timeout. It's going to be Monroe with it. And there's a three. It's a big bucket. We needed a bucket. McMinn County, and so it pushes it 44-38. to 38. Now it's going to be a baseline feed into the corner. Bryant works it back out to Hagewood. He got bumped. No call. Peak with a big offensive or defensive board for the Cherokees. Up to Frazier. Frazier trying to handle it and missed it. it was and a that's good... kind of what Coach Casey was talking about a minute ago, just to slow it down just a tad, you know. They're just kind of playing out of their own shoes at the moment. Lenore feeds a bounce pass across. Agewood bounces it into White. White guarded by Smith straight up, but White gets his own rebound and put back. And it's back to a three-point game. Or a four-point game, sorry. Here's Frazier, top of the key, miss. Monroe gets the rebound, though. Cherokees will reset. Frazier looking around. Now he'll drive inside. Bounces it over to Hester. Corner three for Caden Hester is short. White pulls up the rebound. Now a take by Lenore, kicks it over to Bryant. He'll sidestep the defender. He knocks down a three. And Coach Rutland wants the timeout here as they are to within one point here. And a minute 23 to go. It's 44 for the Cherokees, 43 for the Wolverines. We'll be back in 60 seconds. At Simmons Bank, community matters. Since 1903, we've been dedicated to serving our communities with empowering for us. I'm Shane Whaley, regional president of our East Tennessee market. While some things have changed in recent years, one thing that's stronger than ever is our local team's commitment to serving our community. We offer exceptional service and unmatched expertise to provide solutions for your financial needs. A reliable partner for you because, after all, we're always better together. Simmons Bank, 
Member FDIC. Did you know that All Things Exterior is your one-stop shop for energy-efficient metal roofing, vinyl siding, windows, doors, decking, gutters, and more? Basically, if it involves the exterior of your home, we can help. Hi, I'm Buffy Jones. For nearly 20 years, Micah and I have been honored to help with your construction and home improvement projects. Whether you need one sheet of metal or a hundred, we appreciate your business. We offer quick turnaround, competitive pricing, and professional installation. Come see us at 723 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All Things Exterior, your one-stop shop. FM 101.7 WJSQ Athens. Back here at Mimmin County High School. It's a kick ball violation on the oh. inbounds by the Cherokees, but now they'll have it. Wolverines have kicked it. Hester across midcourt, minute 15 to go. Randy Casey taking that last time out to try to stop the momentum run from the Wolverines. They had put up nine points to the three of the Cherokees in the last three minutes, roughly. Peak with it out front, gets it to Frazier. Frazier picked up here by Drake. Drake, a guy with three fouls. Frazier trying to go inside. Now he'll circle it back out. Mamman County being very patient. Drops it over to Hester. Back to Frazier. They'll reset the five-second call. 45 seconds to go in the quarter. Hester holding the ball. A little fake pass. Now he'll send it over to Frazier. They're just going to play keep away right now. Try to take the last shot of the third quarter. Try to get out of this one. Mamman County has played very fast. Pace like we knew they would but it's also led to some unforced turnovers, throwing the ball away a couple of times. So they're trying to get back into their own rhythm and not let Laverne get into a rhythm. 16 seconds to go. But Laverne's defense has given us some problems. I mean, they're yep. long, and they are playing a good ball game. Very athletic team. A little bounce pass feed over to Frazier, calling for a screen from Smith. Clock at four. Frazier trying to get all the way in, feeds it across the lane. Shot up, no good, but there's a putback by Hayden Smith at the buzzer. 46 to 43, the Cherokees lead it by three at the end of the third. We'll head to the final quarter. And a tight one here for a chance to go to Murfreesboro. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Now's the best time to take precautions against the flu. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, your independently owned health part pharmacy, has both the standard flu vaccine and the new high-dose flu vaccine recommended for patients age 65 and older. You may have weaker immune systems. With a twin of both COVID-19 and flu expected this season, it's also a good time to sign up for the new bivalent Moderna booster. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday, 1001 West Madison Avenue, oh, yeah. Athens. Health Mart, taking the time to listen and to care. At Capstar Bank, we are listening. We want to earn not just your business, but your confidence and loyalty. Capstar Bank is locally owned and operates with a higher level of personalization and passion for greatness than any bank you've ever encountered. Capstar Bank, with locations in Athens, Etowah, Cleveland, Sweetwater, Madisonville, and East Tennessee. And online at capstarbank.com. Capstar Bank, we're listening. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Eight more minutes to go in this sectional game, and it's a 46-43 to game. And you want to look at some close games. Laverne's been in a lot of them this season. They are 4-3 and three in one-possession games. Cherokees have only had one, and they lost that one. Cherokees have won in double digits 19 times compared to the seven for Laverne. So the Cherokees are going to have to get started here early and try to push this one back up to stay in kind of their rhythm here. Here's Monroe taking Lenore off the dribble. Gets to the left block, throws up a shot, and gets fouled on it. They'll say Lenore pushed him off to the side, and that will send the senior to the stripe. Zyle Lenore is going to pick up the team fourth. That's going to give Tucker Monroe two free throws coming his way. Chance to extend it at least to a two-score game, and he converts the first one. Free throws always key. Especially the longer the season goes on and Monroe with just ice in the veins gets to 12 and 13 points. Now a travel by Lenore, he's on the ground and they get a quick timeout on this near side. Mint County fans wanting the turnover as he hit the deck with it. They didn't get the travel call and so it's a quick timeout here. We'll just stay here with you through it. 48 to 43, Cherokees leading this one currently. 
I think the referee was saying that he kept his dribble alive. That was a really low he, dribble. He slid. I thought that's what she was saying. I'm not sure because I wasn't over there. Now, our student section, which was over there and got a good look at it, I think they disagreed with the call. I, uh, undoubtedly, the, the disagreement was at an all-time high over there on that one. Uh, Cherokee's put up 14 points in that third quarter. They've already added uh, two more here off the Tucker Monroe free throws. Laverne getting 19 points in that third quarter. And so outscoring the Cherokees there by five. They raced that eight-point halftime lead from the Cherokees, which was one shot of their largest at nine, which came just under six minutes to go in the third. Frazier guarding Lenore. Lenore picks it up, sends it in. Here's Frazier with a rebound defensively, pushing the pace. Smith gets it on the other end. He's at 12 for the Cherokees, 50 to 43. Bryant spins off the right side of the lane. He kisses it off the glass for their first points of the fourth Ooh, quarter. He's just a sophomore. He's definitely a bright spot for this Wolverine team. Cherokees have it with Peak out front. Peak will drop it back to Hester. Hester hands it off to Frazier. Under seven minutes to go. Coming down to the wire. Monroe gets bumped hard there by Drake. That's going to be the fourth on Javion Drake. Kind of a risky move for him there. And so if I'm McMinn County, you've got White in there with three fouls. You've got Hagewood in there with three. Drake with four. Try to work it in. They've got the size, does Laverne, but the Cherokees can make some creative plays offensively, that's for sure. Frazier back feed to Hester on the cut. Hester gets the lay-in on the right side. Great pass. Hester's first basket here in the second half. 6.30 to go. Cherokees back in front by seven. Here's Lenore out front, guarded by Frazier. Sends it right side to Bryant. Feed into White in the low block. White kick back out to Bryant. Bryant, a couple of dribbles inside. Now it's a bounce down to White again, working against Smith. Smith hit the deck, no call. Monroe battles for a big, big defensive rebound for the Cherokees. Here's Frazier pushing it across midcourt. Started by Drake, six minutes to go. Cherokees up 52-45. Screen from Smith, gets bumped off the screen. Frazier bounces it into the far corner to Monroe, back to Frazier out front. Coach Casey wants them to work it around here. Clock continuing to run but for the McMinn County faithful in black. Can't run quick enough. Now Hester gets tripped up here by Bryant. And Hester did a good job of creating that one right there. Cut yes, inside. Yes, he did. He knew exactly. I mean, but they had to call something. Oh, yeah. He knew exactly where Bryant was going to kind of shift to and cut in front of him. And say we'll be shooting on the next foul because he got six. 16 fouls for 16. Laverne. Frazier gets it inbounds to Monroe. Back to Frazier it comes. Frazier working against Cam Samuels. Frazier wanting to hand it off. He'll get it to Monroe, left wing. Monroe back to Frazier. It comes near side. Frazier between the legs dribble. Goes across the lane, and they're just trying to bleed some clock with a seven-point lead. The advantage of not having the shot clock in the high school game, trying to work to McMinn County's favor. Peak, a nice feed to Hayden Smith. Lay up, does get the roll. Hayden Smith with 14 to lead all Cherokee scores. Pushes the lead back to nine. Ties their largest lead. Five minutes to go. Hayden, Caden Hester gets a big rebound and passes it off before he gets called for the travel to Tucker Monroe. He and Frazier will exchange it in the backcourt. Frazier gets across. Sends it to the left side to Hester. Double team. Now Frazier. Now it's going to be Bryant that gets called for the foul. And Coach Rutland yelling at Bryant oh. on that one. Well, That's they changed the team foul, foul numbers. Now it just says five. I thought I, I thought we were going to be in the okay, bonus. Okay, now they're correcting it. Should be one and one. That's where Frazier's standing at the well, line. no. No, nope, let's see. We'll, we'll check the official book. I'm not sure. They've got it at six officially. Okay. Yep, I do too. Well, so what, what had happened was we had it wrong. And on then the scoreboard, yep. I didn't see him go back to five. So Evans coming in for Frazier now. 
Frazier going to sit between Jay Johnson and Drew Hahn. Coach Randy Casey doesn't have a chair at this end of the bench. I'm going to say that's his, essentially. Evans bounces it back over the line to Hester. Four and a half to go. Up by nine. Hester threw a double team. Little shovel pass over to Smith. Goes up strong against White and makes it. Hayden Smith with 16 points. Cherokees up by 11. The largest lead of the ball game. 4.25 to go. Lenore calling it out. White setting a back screen. Lenore pops behind it. Sends it left side to Bryant. Bryant guarded by Peak. Over to Lenore it goes at the top of the circle. Right side, it's Hagewood's going to fire the three. Missed it. Smith with a big rebound right there inside. Four minutes to go. Cherokees in the double-digit lead of 11 for the first time. Evans goes near midcourt. Hagewood out there gets the five-second call to start. Got to make a move. He does towards the three-point line, loses the handle, and gets fouled. And, you know, it's times like this late in the game that it, that – we have a luxury to have three to four really good ball handlers. Any of them at any time can take care of the ball. That is exactly right. Now we're in the one and one. And now that'll send Davion Evans to the line. And it's going to be, let's see, Drake's going to check in for White. And it's going to be the seventh foul, of course. And that's why Evans is at the stripe. 56-45, 3-44. Left in this one. Evans misses the front end of the one and one. Rebounded by Drake, gets it to Lenore. He's on the left side of the court. Circles all the way around, gets to the baseline. Behind the back dribble, gets free. And Lenore just creating there. He's into double figures, 47 so points. difficult to guard when he goes to the goal. Down to a nine-point lead. Monroe with it, has Hester middle of the floor wide open. Hester will bring it back out front. 3.18 to go. Fans want him to go in and score. They're trying to bleed some clock off. Here's Peak with it, right side of the court. Peak gets past two defenders. Now he gets double teamed, trying to get it up. And Coach Randy Casey, he'll call the timeout quickly. He felt his team was not doing what they needed to right there with 3.03 to go. Up 56 to 47. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Count on Star Regional Medical Center to care for your heart. We offer a range of cardiac services close to home. From healthy heart care to emergency cardiac care in our accredited chest pain center, we're at the heart of our community's health. Star Regional Medical Center. From the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. Take our free heart health assessment online at starregional.com. Back here at McMinn County High School, Jared Wright, Amy McPhail. 3.03 to go in this one, Amy, and it's a nine-point game. They just had it to 11 moments ago, but Lenore creates a big shot down there for the Wolverines. McMinn County, they're kind of playing with hold the ball and run the clock, or do you continue to try to score to maybe put this one away, but you're also going to give Laverne more opportunities that way. I think we hold the ball, but then when we, if we have that open lane, we take it going to the goal. You know, I don't see us shooting any big outside shots. Evans catches it at midcourt from Monroe. Back to Monroe now, top of the key to Hester. They missed Hayden Smith. He's wide open underneath. Hayden Smith's wanting it. Now back door, it goes to Peak instead. He gets away from the defender. That's Zion Griffin, who's in for the Wolverines. And they're going to commit a foul, so it's going to be one and one for the Cherokees, and that's going to be Griffin's first. And team we've, got eight. To, we've got to make our free throws, you know, down yep. the line. We've been making them all game. It's just you, you can't start now missing, making one for two each time or, or not making any. And I believe they were perfect in the first half, and it, it's cooled we were, off. So. Uh, the second half, we are uh, four of six. So Peak at the line makes the first one there. Five of seven. He's one away from double figures and pushing this back to an 11-point lead if he can knock this one down. 2.46 to go, 57-47. And Peak does just that. He's got 10, one of three Cherokees in double figures. 11-point game. Here's Lenore with it. It's kind of been the athletic bright spot for him, at least handling the ball, setting up the offense. He's got 10. It's Bryant, their other leading scorer, with 12. 
Baseline feed, now three-pointers up for Hagefield. Missed it. Smith battling for the rebound, comes away with it. Hayden Smith with another double-double performance here in the postseason. Now they're going to get fouled. Hage Wood's going to foul him. That's going to be his fourth, team ninth, and so 2.17 to go. Cherokees are one foul against the Wolverines from picking up two shot fouls coming all the way to the end. So Hayden Smith at the stripe has had an outstanding senior campaign. Makes the first one here. He's got 17. And I know we've said this all year, but to see how these players have grown over this since the beginning of the season, it's yeah, just amazing. Just in one Every, year. Not, just in one year since the season started in November. They have all improved so much. And this was a talented, very talented team last year that just ran into a bus all Walker Valley in the postseason. But nonetheless, the Cherokees this year, I think they've used that as motivation to get better in the offseason. But continued, as we just said, throughout the season, Smith makes both of them 60 to 47. 13-point lead continues to grow for the Cherokees. Here's Lenore, just takes a wild shot, gets bailed out with a foul call. Not in control at all, but they'll get two shots, and this one's going to be on peak. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't His see how that's a forward. foul. When I felt like we were playing almost lazy defense, a little bit yep. lazy there, and, and then they call a foul. 2.09 to go, Lenore at the line. Two for two there by my count today. The left-hander fires this one up, and it's good. He's got 11. One shot of Bryant, their leading scorer. Well, and I'm wondering if we're doing a little offense for defense here because I think they've got four fouls. And we, they, we expect to see yep. them foul us. Lenore getting set Griffin back in. Yeah, he's going to be probably the guy that's going to foul. Lenore makes both of them. He's knotted up with Bryant for their leading score of 12. Hester to Evans. McMinn County gets it across the time stripe. That's the first hurdle. Now Hester has it. Middle of the floor. Gets inside. Bounce pass feed to Smith. And he gets bumped hard by Griffin underneath. And Hayden Smith's going to get two free throws coming his way. Second on Griffin. Coach Casey telling his ball club to back it up across midcourt. This gym, the top rail, standing room only, the upper deck's full. Great turnout by the McMinn County fans here tonight to support this ball club. As Hayden Smith is at 19 points, 61-49, 1.56 to play. On the verge of punching their ticket to Murfreesboro in the Murphy Center. AKA the glass house. Smith misses the second one here. His second miss from the line tonight. He's also knocked down quite a few. Corner three is up and good there for, let's see, number 10. That's going to be Sherman who got that one up in the face of the defender from McMinn County. Cuts it down to a nine point game with 147. Full timeout on the floor. We'll take it with them. Cherokee's leading at 61 to 52, back in 60. At Simmons Bank, community matters. Since 1903, we've been dedicated to serving our community with I'm Shane Brady, regional president of our East Tennessee Bank. While some things have changed in recent years, one thing that's stronger than ever is our local team's commitment to serving our community. We offer exceptional service and unmatched expertise to provide solutions for your financial needs. A reliable partner for you because we're always better together. Simmons Bank, member at the IC. Back here from Main County High School. Cherokee's leading this one 61 to 52. And the 60 second timeout took a lot longer for the teams, but they recognize the running back by hand just now during the timeout. Student section giving him a lot of love over there on the far side. Always great to see the excitement he brings to this gym, along with all of his teammates at the back, and all the former players that are back. I mean, there's a lot of them here tonight. Oh, Orlando Wells has been behind us somewhere, walking back and forth, facing. It's Monroe with the ball up the inbound. Trying to get away from the defenders, gets it over to Evans. Got to get it across midcourt, and that's going to be a quick foul by Cameron Samuels. And that's going to put Evans back to the stripe here. It's one for two there tonight. 1.40 to go. Cherokee's the 
the lead had been up to 13. It's down to nine currently. But you just kind of like the Cleveland game we talked about in the region final. When you got an athletic team like Laverne has shown that they are, you can never count it over. They battled down to the wire against Blackman. We're actually leading by four with a minute left in that ball game. Then got sent to overtime and then lost it by one. Had a last second shot to try to win it, but couldn't make it. Evans converts both free throws. He's got seven points, 63-52. Lenore, top of the key, working against Smith. Smith trying to stay with him. Hester cleans up the rebound. Cherokees, a minute 25 away. Now they throw it away, picking it up with Sherman. Hagewood takes a three, caroms off to the right, into the hands of Sherman, kicks back out to Hagewood. Hagewood takes a drive against Monroe, and Monroe's going to foul him on the take. Not a bad foul, though. No, I think that was a good foul. Five on the Cherokees. Two on Tucker Monroe. That's going to put Hagewood at the line for the first time tonight. He's only had one shot he has made. He's got two points. Hagewood's first one does rattle home for him. Back to a ten-point game. Offensive, defensive substitutions there again. Griffin back in. He's kind of been the man to foul the Cherokees down the stretch. Samuel's also fouling with only one. Hagewood gets both of them to fall. Mitch Rutland, a lot of seniors on his ball club. Evans in the far corner gets fouled quickly there before he can get across the time strike, 107 to go. You know, as times like this, the clock just doesn't move it's, quick it's, enough. I look, and I'm like, how is it still over a minute? It's at a tortoise's pace, that's for sure. we just got to, we got to get up there, make our free throws, and then play some decent defense. And you'd think they'd be trying to make some threes. Yep. You know, we've not really seen him shoot very many three attempts here in the last few minutes. Hagewood taking a couple of that last trip down has been about it. Team Tom just need one stop, get the ball back and try to run the clock. So Evans puts him back up by 10, make that 11 as the senior guard rattles his ninth point home. 11 point lead for McMinn County, approaching the 60 second mark and there it goes. Hagewood's gonna fire a three on the right side and it's good. The commentator's curse. We we're just talking about it as Hagewood knocks that one down and he cuts it down to an eight point game with 56.9. Wolverines take their last time out. It looks like full 60 second timeout. Cherokee's leading at 65 to 57. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Did you know that All Things Exterior has the largest selection of vinyl siding and metal roofing in this area? Hi, I'm Buffy Jones, inviting you to stop by and see how we can help with the construction of home improvement project. Our prices are competitive and no job is too big or small. Many colors are available within one to two business days. Micah and I have nearly 20 years of experience, so we know the industry. And we have professional installers who can get the job done right. We're located at 723 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All Things Exterior, your one Stop shop for vinyl siding, roofing, and more. Now the best time to take precautions against the flu. Madison Avenue Pharmacy, your independently owned health park pharmacy, has both the standard flu vaccine and the new high dose flu vaccine recommended for patients age 65 and older who may have a weaker immune system. With a twin demic of both COVID 19 and flu expectancy, it's also a good time to sign up for the new bivalent and donor boost. Madison Avenue Pharmacy. From 9 to 6 Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturday, 1001 West Madison Avenue, Athens, Hill Park, taking the time to listen and to care. Back out of the timeout, it's going to be quickly inbounded to Evans, and he's going to draw the foul there against Sherman, his first. Of course, that's technically their 13th here in the second half, but they stopped keeping count on the scoreboard at 10. Evans at the line, makes the first one here. He's into double figures. Four Cherokees into double figures. 66-57, 55.5 remaining. Evans, a couple of dribbles, he's set. Second one is good, 11 points for Davion. Back to 10-point game. Lenore quickly up the floor, 
Gets it to Bryant. He'll take a deep three. And this Laverne team not going away. It's a seven-point game. Clock is running. Cherokee's trying to get it in. Smith gets it, trying to get away from the defenders. Here's Evans to Hester. Quickly up the floor, it goes to Peak. Peak bounces it back to Smith, and Smith lays it in on the right side. He's at 21. Nine-point game. Cherokees just fighting the clock at the moment. Here's a three from Sherman on the right wing. Long rebound, chased down by Trent Peak. Cherokees are going to punch their ticket to Murfreesboro, but not before they commit a turnover right there with 10.5 remaining. Trying to go for the alley-oop, and they throw it over the head of Hayden Smith, which is hard to do. 69-60. Fans on their feet here at McMinn County High School. Five seconds to go. Lenore is going to scoop it in for the score. Seven-point game. But the clock stuck up now. And for the first time in a dozen years, the Cherokees are headed to Murfreesboro. Final score, the Cherokees beat the Wolverines 69-62. to It was a hard-fought effort. Cherokees were in control for most of the game, but the Wolverines just would not go away. But it will be an extended season for McMinn County, at least for another game. It's either going to be next a week after next, it'll be Tuesday it's or next be week. It's going to be Tuesday night, one of the last two games, or oh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning, morning, one of the first two games. The Cherokees at least will make it to Murfreesboro and have another chance to make How some exciting. magic happen in this season. Again, it's since the 2011 team, since they have won. And uh, great sportsmanship by their Laverne coaching staff as they come by and they talk about it. They're one of their assistants telling Coach Randy Casey, go represent us very well. And 4A basketball, the Cherokees, as they are dogpiled. And the biggest thing here is don't get anybody hurt. Oh, I know. The student we, we... section is being dogpiled with the basketball team. So they're going to try to get some of those guys up off the floor I, so I'm they don't get hurt. I'm afraid my child is in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will have to say, he's probably in there. Again, Cherokees punch that ticket to the postseason in Murfreesboro. We'll go ahead. We're going to take a two-minute break telling you the final score. Cherokee 69, the Wolverine 62. Back in two minutes. At Capstar Bank, we're listening. We want to earn not just your business, but your confidence and loyalty. Capstar Bank is locally owned and operates with a higher level of personalization and passion passion for greatness than any bank you've ever encountered. Capstar Bank with locations in Athens, Etowah, Cleveland, Sweetwater, Madisonville, and East Tennessee. And online at capstarbank.com. Capstar Bank. We're listening. Member FDIC. Equal housing link. Sound on Star Regional Medical Center for emergency care close to home. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Including the higher levels of heart care found in an accredited chest pain center. Because of an illnesses, injuries, strokes, and heart attack strikes, every minute matters. Star Regional Medical Center. From the routine to the unforeseen, count on us. Learn more at StarRegional.com. At Simmons Bank, community matters. Since 1903, we've been dedicated to serving our community with empowered local leadership. I'm Shane Wade, Regional President of our East Tennessee Market. While some things have changed in recent years, one thing that's stronger than ever is our local team's commitment to serving our community. We offer exceptional service and unmatched expertise to provide solutions for your financial needs. A reliable partner for you because, after all, we're always better. Together. Simmons Bank, member of FDIC. Did you know that All Things Exterior is your one-stop shop for energy-efficient metal roofing, vinyl siding, windows, doors, decking, gutters, and more? Basically, if it involves the exterior of your home, we can help. Hi, I'm Becky Jones. For nearly 20 years, Michael and I have been honored to help with your construction and home improvement projects. Whether you need one sheet of metal or a hundred, we appreciate your business. We offer quick turnaround, competitive pricing, and professional installation. Come see us at 720. 23 Congress Parkway South in Athens. All things exterior, your one stop shop. 101.7 WJSG. Back here at Mimmin County High School, and we're joined right now. And I'm going to try to turn his headphones up so he can hear us. We're going to be joined by a couple of players real quick. Caden Hester, one of these seniors for the Cherokees that have joined us here. And Caden, 
Uh, we're going to talk to Hayden Smith as well in just a second, but another big win for this Cherokee Ball Club. Your season continues to go, but a big thing is you all walk out of this gym as seniors winning your last time on this floor. How does that feel for you? It feels great. We've been talking about it all year, and it's just finally – it finally feels good to see everything unravel like we've been planning, and that's been our dream since day one. So we came in here, and it, it feels great just to see it unravel. Let's you, go. You've had a huge postseason, um, averaging 14 points in the previous five games coming into tonight. You had just one shot of double digits tonight at nine. But the plays you seem to make defensively, rebounding tonight, I had you at five. That's probably way low for what you had. But just talk about – how you anticipate where the ball's going to be all the time, it seems. Well, I just I just play off instincts, and in practice, it just we just be going hard all the time, so it's just second nature when we get out on the court. And uh, I really don't really be looking at the points. I just be going and playing and doing whatever I can to help the team. So, so uh, Amy's actually going to give up her headset, I think, to Hayden. We'll get him in here. Hayden Smith with a big night. Let him throw the headset on as well. Two of the four seniors for Coach Randy Casey in his second year, y'all punched the ticket to Murfreesboro. Hayden had a big night, 21 points with over 10 rebounds tonight. That's tough. Uh, what has it been for you like in this postseason? You had 12.4, you got named district tournament MVP down in Cleveland. You all just seem to be clicking at the right time. Uh, you know, we listen to Coach Casey, man, and we just come in here and we believe in ourselves every day, and we just going to keep making a run for state. We're trying to get to the state championship and win it all, man. Oh, well, you can't win it unless you win this one. Y'all took care of business. It yeah. felt close the whole time. I don't know if y'all felt as nervous as we did out there on the court, but you, this Wolverines team kind of battled y'all pretty tough, physical inside. You just couldn't get away from them enough, but in the end it did pay off winning at 69-62. to 62. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, 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 this game, it was just a get us better game, and we're coming for more. What's it been like to play for Randy Casey these last two it's years? It's been great, man. I ain't going to lie. That's the best thing ever. As hard as I know he pushes you all, it looks to have paid off. Yes, Am I right? Sir. Yes, sir. So uh, what are you guys going to get to do before you head to Murfreesboro? How do you get ready to go to, the, to a place that it's been 12 years since Cherokees have been? Mentally, we, we just we prepare the same way. It's not nothing different. It's just a, it's just a basketball. We get a basketball, a court, and a goal. That, I mean, it's the same thing since day one. And so just because we're going into a different place, it doesn't change much. So we just going to play how we play and then just let everything work out. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining us. Let you go celebrate with some more fans and, and teammates there. Thanks for joining us. Way to walk off this court as seniors. Yes, Congratulations, sir. guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So outstanding young men right there for the Cherokees and Randy Casey's ball club. And, and give Amy her headset back as we are here courtside. Cherokees win this one 69 to 62. And they punch their ticket into Murfreesboro. And, Amy, it, you can just see the excitement on the fan base. There's a lot of pictures being taken by everybody. Um, well, it's a moment of a lifetime. Oh, yeah, I mean, it is. you think about how many, you know, we went 91, we went 2011, and now we're going to go in 2023. You know, it's something special. It's spe yeah. something special for this community. You know, we got me Mid Central Girls going and McMahon County Boys. I mean, what a great thing for this county. That is you know? exactly right, and, and it's and it's something that gets everybody around, you know, surrounded by a team, a ball club. They do it very well, and the support tonight was huge. Randy Casey, he's going to make his way over to us right now as he gets some more. It's just like the region championship. He's getting congratulated by a bunch of different people here courtside, and what he has done in two years here at the helm at Minden County High School has been unbelievable. And he's, you know, and he spoke to this before, you know, he's made the players believe that we can do this. Yep. You know, we can do this. We can be there. And, and now it's all, it's all coming to be. He's. I didn't hardly I, recognize him. He's taking his know, glasses off. He's taking the glasses I, off. A couple of big handshakes right here from some fans. And, uh. It just the feeling that I know he had. He's he told us he's been in this industry for 32 years coaching. So what he's been able to do, he he put it as a challenge as you just talked about to this ball club, and they have exceeded it. Maybe not to what they thought they could, but they at least are going to Murfreesboro in his second year. And Coach Randy Casey, wow. Coach, it, it, I know this game probably took a lot out of you emotionally as you're looking around at everybody still celebrating this one. Put it in perspective, the region championship was last Thursday. You come here tonight, you punch the ticket to Murfreesboro against a tough Wolverines team. What's going through your mind right now? Um, you know, so many, so many emotions, and I'm just so proud of my guys. I am so proud of my guys. You know, 
outside of our locker room. A lot of people wanted us to, but they really didn't believe that we could do this. And we did, and they believed, and they believed. I told them the last, last game, I said, thank you guys for believing in me. You know, and, and they said, Coach, thank you, for, you know, right back. And it's, it, this may be the best bunch of, of kids I've coached in, in 32 years as far as together, as far as being together and, and, and loving each other and, and doing exactly what I ask them to do um, every day. And, and that's, our, that's our thing every day, guys, and that's it's incredible. I, we just talked to Caden Hester and Hayden uh, Smith a uh, minute ago, uh, two of the uh, seniors that uh, get to walk out. Uh, off this court as winners for the last time. A lot of times, you, as a senior, you might lose your last time on your home right. floor, but these young men get to come back, work hard for Murfreesboro next week. Talk about the four seniors. You know, I, can, I can't say enough about them. I can't say enough about them. Those guys have been great leaders. You know, um, um, you know Caden Hester's been a leader from day one. And, and you know, he, he's, he's just a natural leader. And, you know, those other guys have grown into that. Tucker leads by example. You know, he's not a he's not a, a, a guy that's a rah-rah guy, but he's a guy that just does his work. And, and you know, and, and Hayden Smith has grown so much. And, you know, not off the court first and on the court. He's grown so much. I'm so proud uh, of those guys. And, you know, and Davion Evans, you know, he just plays so hard for us all the time, all the time, all the time. And, you know, he never, there's never a day goes by and say, Coach, Coach, I love you. And that, that's more important to me than what, what's going on here. Well, I, I asked uh, Caden and Hayden both, I said, what's it like to play for Randy Casey? And they said, it's great. That's all they had to yeah. say, big smiles on their face. And I know you've just alluded to how great it is to coach this team. Uh, talk about the crowd tonight, Coach. Oh, this incredible. gym was probably the biggest crowd I've seen and loud the whole time. Yeah, incredible. Incredible. Uh, a lot of former players, Juwan Smith, standing here at midcourt celebrating with some yeah. team. So you've punched the ticket for the first time in 12 years. I texted you that a little bit earlier today, some stats about it. You're going to the glass house. Yeah, about floor that. to ceiling windows. Chance to keep the season going. It, it's do or die now as it was in this game. Um, but how do, you, how do you all get set for next week? You know, we're just going to take tomorrow off and we're going to enjoy this. You know, that's the first and foremost. We're going to enjoy this, let it sink in. And we'll take a day off and rest, and then we'll see. We'll know who we play and when we play, and we'll start getting ready. Um, you know, we're not done. These guys, you know, we, we, we talk about getting to the top of the mountain. Now we're at the top of the mountain. We're on it. Now what are we going to do while we're there? We're going to, go, we're going to stay just a little bit. We're going to stay a long time. And we want to be the last man standing, and that's what we're going to talk about in here, I'm sure. Well, Coach, we appreciate you joining. I'm not going to keep you from the team any longer. We – We've talked a lot this season. This has been a special year, and the great thing is it gets to keep going. Yeah, and I told you guys before, the main thing about this is I don't want to, this to be over because these guys, I enjoy being around them so much. That's the main thing, and I didn't want it to be over because they're just they're just wonderful to be around, and they, and they give me energy every day, and, and I'm so proud of them. Well, Coach, congrats. Thank we'll you. hopefully be seeing you in Murfreesboro. That's, so. that's the deal. Thank you. Sounds Thank good. You. Go Thank celebrate you. with that team some more. You better get some water bottles. I don't have any ammunition either. You better find some water bottles because we know what's going to happen. So, Coach Randy Casey and his ball club, Amy, uh, uh, very emotional. He was emotional the other night in the region uh, after the region championship, but almost tears in his eyes tonight because he knows what it means to this program, but also him as a coach to see what he kind of planned out here when he got here is coming to fruition, maybe ahead of schedule for what a lot of people thought. But he has got his team playing great at the last, at the part of the season that they need to be playing great. Yes, and you know, as a coach, you pour your heart and soul into your team. That's what you do. And when it's basketball season, what do you do in your spare time? You're watching film. You're game planning. You know, this he eats, lives, and breathes basketball. You know, so to see how personal that it is to him, I think really means something. So, Amy, you've got some team numbers right there. Let's haul out some of those uh, real quick as we begin to wrap this one up here from McMinn. Rebounds pretty evenly matched. McMinn 26, Laverne 27, two-point field goals. McMinn 15 to 23 for 65%. Laverne 21 to 35 for 60%. Three-pointers, four of 19 for McMinn 21%. Four of 17 for Laverne 24%. And here's a big stat, free throws. McMinn 27 of 30 for I wrote 90%. I'm not sure. I can't read my writing. And uh, Laverne, 8 of 12 for 67%. Turnover's pretty close, 12 and 13. 
Well, the Cherokees do it behind a big scoring night from Hayden Smith, 21 points, 10 rebounds unofficially. Uh, the Wolverines, on the other hand, were led by 15 points by Landon Bryant, 12 for uh, Zia Lenore. Cherokees outside of the 21 points for Hayden Smith. It's Tucker Monroe with 13 points along with six rebounds, 11 points by Davion Evans. Most of those coming at the charity stripe in that final frame. A couple of steals and a couple of rebounds for the guard. Ten points by Trent Peak along with some rebounds. Nine points by Caden Hester along with five rebounds. And five points by Reese Frazier who, mind you, was playing with like a a bandage over his right eye for most uh, yeah, of the game. Yeah, I think game. he got a cut. So, I, I don't know if it's something so, that he'll have to have stitched or, or what. You've got some other 4A well, scores Well, right I just there. Uh, Dobbins Bennett beat William Blunt by one. So, That's you know, we, big, had, we had talked previously in the year about how William Blunt may yep. be over there, but it looks like Dobbins Bennett have uh, beat them out. And then is, Sevier, is that? Sevier County. Yeah, Sevier County is leading Carnes. I think that they're 4A, aren't they? Um, yes, because Carnes beat William Blunt in the postseason. So, and they'll kind of reshuffle who's who's playing who. But right. Cherokees will either play um, next week on Tuesday night, the 14th. It'll be a 4:30 or a 6 o'clock game. There's two quarterfinal games that night, or it'll be Wednesday morning, the 15th. 10 a.m. and then roughly 11:30. It's about 15 minutes after the first game is played. And those are Central times, aren't And that's aren't they? Central times, yes. So it would be 5:30 and 7 o'clock our time, 11 a.m. and 12:30 p.m. on Wednesday our time. And then they would not play again until Friday as long as they keep winning. Saturday will be the championship. So Cherokees take this one, 69 to 62, against a hard-fought Wolverines team from Laverne High School. But McMinn County comes out on top. They go to 26 and 8 overall. They've won their last 11 ball games, and it punches their ticket to the Glass House over in Murfreesboro. Our plan is to keep calling the games as long as we can, so we will keep that updated for you throughout the social media and on the uh, kind of ads throughout the day over the next week or so. So, once again, appreciate Amy McPhail being by my side. Uh, Always thankful to Coach Randy Casey to stop and talk to us for a few minutes after these big games. It's always great to hear from him. Hayden, uh, Caden, Hayden Smith and Caden Hester, I'm going to one day get their names correct on the right last name, but always great to talk to those seniors and uh, two outstanding young men among the four that are graduating. But that will wrap us up. Thank you to our sponsors for making this happen. And as always, thank you to our man, Handsome Dan, back at the station. He keeps us on the airwaves, lets us know when we dropped off the air as well. So appreciate him being with us for most of the season along. And thank you, everybody that's listening. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we've had a blast. Hope you have as well. That will wrap it up here where the Cherokees are going to Murfreesboro. For WGSQ, WLAR Sports, this is Jared Wright. Have a great night. You have been listening.